एस एल टी मोबिजा दी कनेक्शन एस एल टी मोबिजा दी कनेक्शन Tonight, don't discard yet. The WHO gives a vote of confidence for the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which some claim leads to blood clots. AstraZeneca is an excellent vaccine. There has been no death to date. The vaccine can continue to be used while its investigation is ongoing. Show your face. The Minister of Public Security reveals that he had inked the cabinet paper banning face coverings in public places. That has been introduced only in view of the national security. Polls afoot. President Gotabe Rajpaksha tells minister to remove obstacles to provincial council elections. Unfazed. The foreign secretary is in a defiant mood over the UK led resolution vote in Geneva. We were even told some ambassadors are paid a lot of money so that they will toe the line but we will not surrender our sovereignty. All that and much more coming up on First at 9 this Saturday the 13th of March 2021. अल्कोहल अडंगो हैंड सैनिटाइजर बावित कराने, लेड रोग ऐतिहासिक विषय पीछे वाले टा एरे ही वसा टांग कराने, हाँ दुन वादी में मिलन रुपया तुम से पन है। From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana first at nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dham Kekanayak. Now the World Health Organization says that it was aware of blood clot concerns linked to a specific batch of Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine but maintains that to date no one has died from any coronavirus jab. Some countries which use the vaccine have already paused their vaccine campaigns. Now the WHO however says that it is important to understand that the AstraZeneca vaccine should continue to be used as there is no indication yet to suggest otherwise while investigations continue in the background. The government said yesterday that it will continue to use the AstraZeneca vaccine as there hasn't been any instances of concern in the island. Alarm bells rang out across the world over the last several days with claims that some people who were administered the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine had developed blood clots. Austria, Denmark, Estonia, Lithuania, Norway, Iceland, and Thailand have reportedly paused their inoculation campaigns owing to the concerns with around 30 incidents of blood clotting after inoculation being reported in Europe. What's more, the AstraZeneca vaccine is one of only two which the World Health Organization has given approval for emergency use to date. As such, the AstraZeneca vaccine is used in over 35 countries and the EU bloc, including Sri Lanka. Responding to the concerns raised about the blood clotting following the jab, the World Health Organization says that its expert committee is presently assessing the reports on AstraZeneca. They are looking at these particular signals and will meeting soon and will advise WHO on any new safety signals or concerns about any vaccines and they're currently assessing the reports on AstraZeneca and as soon as we've got a full understanding from our committee we will communicate that to the public this is very important to understand that they are saying that the benefit outweighs the risk and that's very important now the only reason there's been a suspension in some countries is that they are looking at those signals now AstraZeneca is an excellent vaccine as are the other vaccines that are being used and as i said we've reviewed the data on deaths there has been no Death to date proven to have been caused by vaccination. The WHO spokesperson meanwhile insisted that there is no indication yet which would suggest the AstraZeneca vaccine should not be used. It's very important to understand that yes we should continue using the AstraZeneca vaccine. All that we're looking at is what we always look at. Any safety signal must be investigated. In fact, it's very important that we're hearing safety signals because if we were not hearing about any safety signals, then that would suggest that there is not enough uh, review and vigilance. We must always ensure we look for any safety signals when we roll out vaccines and we must review them. But there is no indication to not use it. 
In the meantime, further assurance came from the WHO chief himself, who said that some countries suspended the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine as a precaution, but it is still safe to use while investigations continue in the background. WHO is aware that some countries have suspended the use of AstraZeneca vaccines based on reports of blood clots in some people who received doses of the vaccine from two batches. This measure was taken as a precaution while a full investigation is finalized. It's important to note that the European Medicines Agency has said there is no indication of a link between the vaccine and blood clots and that the vaccine can continue to be used while its investigation is ongoing. Sri Lanka's best health insurance with the fastest claim settlement, Soft Logic Life. Pay just 500,000 rupees to reserve your unit today. Mulberry Residence. Now, the progress Sri Lanka has made in controlling the spread of the COVID-19 virus will be in vain if the South African variant of the virus finds its way into the community. The caution came from the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association today as she urged health authorities to stay vigilant and ensure that the South African strand does not slip under the radar and into the community. Only one case of the South African strand has been found in the island so far and it involves a Sri Lankan returnee. The SLMA president also warned that if the new variant is let loose, the Oxford AstraZeneca jab used in the inoculation drive will be obsolete as it has no effect on the South African strand. As Sri Lanka's daily COVID-19 caseload continues to steadily decline, with only 297 infections being confirmed yesterday. 291 of yesterday's cases were recorded from 20 districts, while the other six infections were detected among Sri Lankan returnees. Gampa and Gaul reported 66 novel coronavirus infections each, while 38 cases of the virus were reported from Colombo. Meanwhile, 25 cases of the virus were also confirmed from Ratnapura. As for today, 179 persons have tested positive for the virus so far. In the meantime, the country's total COVID-19 related deaths rose to 525 yesterday after five fatalities were confirmed by the Director General of Health Services. Three of the deaths had taken place on the 11th of this month, with another on the 10th as well. Only one death had actually happened yesterday. With regard to Sri Lanka's inoculation program, a total of 760,765 vaccinations had been successfully completed by the end of yesterday. Meanwhile, the detection of the South African variant of the virus in an overseas arrival was, has caused much concern. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine used in the immunization drive is said to offer little in the way of immunity for the South African strand of the virus. As such, President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association Dr. Padma Gunaratna urges health authorities to be vigilant as the country might have to face a third wave of the COVID-19 virus if the South African variant manages to enter the community and spread under the radar of health authorities. South African the recovery of a further 295 persons from the novel coronavirus was confirmed today, taking the overall tally to 84,253. As such, Sri Lanka's number of active COVID-19 cases currently stand at 2,686. Moving on to another topic, Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Janat Kolomigi is in a defiant mood over the looming vote at the United Nations Human Rights Council on the core group's resolution against Sri Lanka. During a book launch yesterday, the Foreign Secretary said that Sri Lanka most likely might lose the vote but will not go down without putting up a fight. He said that Sri Lanka was told that certain ambassadors have been paid colossal amounts of money in exchange for voting against the island. The Foreign Secretary's comments come at the heels of the tabling of the revised draft resolution on Sri Lanka ahead of the UNHRC vote. The Ambassadors Forum of Sri Lanka launched a book titled Geneva Crisis, The Way Forward at the Foreign Ministry yesterday. 
The book contains 28 articles related to the Geneva crisis, written by a number of key personalities, including the incumbent foreign minister and foreign secretary. The maiden copies of the book were presented to Foreign Minister Dinesh Kunavardhana and Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolambage by former Ambassador President's Council Sarat Vijay Singha. In my article, it talks about a consensual resolution. Now, the consensus is not with us. It is among these so-called elite group. That is the consensus they have been talking about from the beginning. Although they pretended that they wanted our consensus. A self-respecting, sovereign nation, Sri Lanka, will not go down without fighting. At this moment, we have one clear voice, one clear directive, and one clear objective. We will not surrender our sovereignty. We might not win the vote because it is heavily biased towards a certain number of countries. And these countries have lots of money. And we were even told some ambassadors in certain capitals are paid a lot of money so that they will tow the line. We can't do that. We can't afford to do that. We only have our policies. We only have our principles. To me, Sri Lanka today is one of the most peaceful countries on planet Earth. This is not about human rights. This is making a small country which is strategically located to kneel down and follow them. I think our policy of neutrality, which is the right way to go, but certain powers don't like us to be neutral. Whatever the Human Rights Council will say, we are not legally binding to do anything. If the world is following the order, the International Court of Justice gave a ruling in 2019 that the Chagos Archipelago should be given to the rightful owners, that is Mauritius. Has UK done that? They have evicted an entire population so that they can have a military base. Another country which is co-sponsoring is Malawi. And the Human Rights Commissioner's reports has a half page about Malawi. Crime against women increased by 300% during the last year. So such a country, for whatever money or influence, is co-sponsoring a resolution against this peaceful country. Now, Minister of Public Security, Rear Admiral Dr. Sarat Virasekara said today that he had signed the cabinet paper ordering a ban on any form of face covering in public places in view of national security. This will include Islamic garbs such as the burqa and the niqab. Sri Lanka is not alone in banning face coverings in public places since a total of 19 countries have implemented a similar ban with the intention of ensuring their national security with Switzerland being the latest to follow suit. The minister also gave an explanation as to why full-face helmets are not affected by this ban. Now, the cabinet paper that we have written is about prohibiting or preventing wearing anything that is covering the face other than that are required for health reasons that has been introduced only in view of the national security. And also, you can't compare that with the full-face covering helmet because helmet is worn uh, while it's riding a motorbike and for the rider's personal protection. The police can at any one time stop the rider and ask him to remove the helmet if any identification is required and this face covering as per this burqa or this niqab you can't do that and they will consider it as an insult to the religion most of the western countries also they have banned the face covering in view of this national security so here we are going to ban only the face covering right so you can have mask for health reasons but other than that nobody can wear the face covering because mainly it is about this national security Former chairman of the organization Jamaat-e Islami, Rashid Hajjul Akbar, had been arrested by the Terrorist Investigation Division last night in line with a recommendation made in the final report of the Presidential Commission which probed the Easter Sunday terror attacks. The suspect is an uncle of the Maunella Lord with the statue Vandals. Meanwhile, an extraordinary Gazette notification was also issued last night containing new regulations to rehabilitate individuals who surrender or are taken into custody of extremist activities. Former chairman of the organization jamaat e islami Rashid Hajjul Akbar, was arrested by the Terrorist Investigation Division last night from the area of Demetagoda. The 60-year-old is a resident of Murutavela in Mavanella. The suspect had led jamaat e islami for 25 years from 1994 to 2019. He had been arrested on the 25th of August 2019 
following the Easter Sunday terror attacks and later released. Rashid Hajul Akbar is also the uncle of the two main suspects in the Lord Buddha statue vandalism incident in Mavanallam. The two suspects, brothers Mohammed Sadiq Abdul Haq and Mohammed Shahid Abdul Haq, had been active members of the Hajul Akbar led Jamaat Islami student campaign. The terrorists to set off a bomb at the Tropical Inn in Dehivalam. Jamil Mohammed had also been a powerful member of the Jamaat Islami student campaign. What's more, a sister of the Haq brothers, Mohammed Ibrahim Shahida, was arrested from the area of Mavanella recently. Investigations revealed that she had taken the Bayat oath before Zaharan Hashim, a pledge to carry out a suicide attack at any time in the name of religion. Hajjul Akbar, who was arrested yesterday, was also summoned before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry, which probed the attacks to testify. The final report of the PCOI recommends that the organization Jamaat e Islami and its student campaign be proscribed. The report also recommends that Hajjul Akbar be arrested and legal action be taken against him for conspiring to establish an Islamic state within Sri Lanka. Wahab Matavadi, Miratula Vyap, the Kirimata, Mohwasar Ganana, Kasita, Katitukarati, Pudgaleku Bauta, Penigos Tibeno, Mohovisin, Jamate, Islam, Sangwidani, Namin, Prachari Kernalada, Sagaravak Magin, Nirantarema, Muslim Muladar Mavadi, Antavadi, Wahab Wadi, Petra Vimata, Yamam Karunu, Dripat Karati Bauta, Anavar Navi Tibeno, Mima Tadangota, Sakakaru, Sastavadi, Valakwimi Panate Arte, Radom Nyogia Klabagina, Taudurta Pasta. In the meantime, an extraordinary gazette notification containing new regulations to rehabilitate individuals who surrender or are taken into custody over extremist activities had been issued yesterday. It contains provisions to rehabilitate those who surrender or are arrested over extremist ideologies for up to a year at a particular centre. Meanwhile, the Cabinet Subcommittee, which was appointed to study the PCOI report on the Easter Sunday terror attacks, has postponed its report until the 29th of March. Minister Udaya Gaman Pillar said that the two-week extension was sought since the PCY recommendations have to be studied carefully and in depth. We will see you on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Corona virus is the first time of the coronavirus. Surfixel Hygiene Boosters. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, President Gotabi Rajbaksha has instructed the subject minister to withdraw any bill that is proving to be an obstacle in holding the provincial council elections and to forge ahead ensuring that the PC polls are held as soon as possible. The instruction had been given during a discussion with the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peruna Provincial Council Forum. Meanwhile, speaking elsewhere, the head of state expressed disappointment over the manner in which unsubstantiated claims are disseminated, especially by the opposition. President Gotabe Rajapaksa had an audience with the Provincial Council Forum representing the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna at the Presidential Secretariat last afternoon. <laughs> හැබැයි ඒකේ මහජන නියෝජිතයන් ගෙන් නැතුව මේ සඳහා යම් කිසි බාධකයක් තිබෙනවා මැතිවරණ කොමිෂම මාව හම්බු වුණා මම ඒ අයට පැවසුවේ තමුන්ගේ රාජකාරියක් හැටියට මේ මැතිවරණ පවත්වන්න දැනට තියෙන පළාත් සභා පවත්වන්නට තියෙන බාධකය වන ඒ ගෙනාපු පනතිවත් කරගන්නට ඕන Meanwhile, 14th leg of President Gotabe Rajapaksa's initiative to engage with the rural communities, titled Gama Samagapili Sandarak, was worked off today in the area of Galagoda of Hikkadua in Gaul. The head of state addressed the gathering at the Galaguda Janapada Vidyalaya. Me pass Kurida Praharegan. Ektara Viruddha Paksha Mantri Vare, Chodana Kalatibuna, make a pity pass saying me, Mamat, Basil Raja Paksha Matumat, Nisanka, Tena di Pati Matumat Kir. Mama CID Ekata, Kiwa, the Maya Mediana, Toraturu, Ogul Aragand, Mantri Tumat Endakiela, Kiwa Badana, Toraturu Kiand, Toraturu Wasan Kirima, Paparadi Kriava, the Me Toraturu Handagyama. ඒ මන්ත්‍රීතුමා කියනවා නෑ මට සීයනැති වුණා මට අමතක වුණා එහෙම තොරතුරක් දන්නේ නෑ 
එහෙම කියලා කියනවා. ඉතින් ඔය වගේ තමයි අමතක වෙන දන්නේ නැති මේ තොරතුරු තමයි ජනතාවට ගෙනත් දෙන්නේ. එවැනි ජාතික ප්‍රශ්නයකදී මේ වගේ අභූත චෝදනා විපක්ෂයේ නගනවා නම් තම උන්නාන්සලාට හිතා ගන්න පුළුවන් අනිත් ඒවා ගැන කොහොමද චෝදනාද නගන්නේ කියලා. මේ කොමිෂන් සභා වාර්තාව පාස්කු ඉරිදා. මේක හැම තැනකම තියෙන්නේ. ගිය පසු ගිය රජය ජාතික ආරක්ෂා වෙනුවෙන් කිසිම තැකීමක් කළේ නැහැ. ඒකයි මේ පහර දීමට හේතුව ඇත්ත. අපේ රජය යටතේ බෙදුම්වාදී අන්තවාදයටවත් එම නැත්තම් ඉස්ලාම් ආගමවාදී අන්තවාදයටවත් අපි ඉඩ දෙන්නේ නැහැ. සමහර අය රජයක් හැටියට ඒවා අතපසු කළා. දැන් උත්සාහ ගන්නවා හිටපු ජනාධිපතිතුමාට විතරක් මේක පටවන්නට. මේ ආණ්ඩුවක් හැටියට මේක පැහැදිලිවම පෙන්නලා දීලා තියෙනවා. ඒ රජය කොහොමද මේක රාජ්‍ය ආරක්ෂාවට නිසි තැන දුන්නේ නැත්තේ කියන කාරණේ. ඒ අය ඔක්කොම වග කියන්නට ඕන. කාඩිනල්තුමා මේ ගැන ප්‍රකාශ කළා තියෙනවා. සමහර දේශපාලනයක්යන් ඒකට සම්බන්ධයි ඒ අයගේ නම් මේක ඇවිල්ලා නැහැයි කියලා. අපි ඒ අය ගැනත් හොයනවා. හැබැයි ඔය කියන දේශපාලඥයෝ අපිත් එක්ක නැහැ. මාව බලයට ගේන්නවත්, අපේ රජය බලයට ගේන්නවත් ඔය කියන දේශපාලඥයෝ අපිට උදව් වුණේ නැහැ. ඒ අය ඉන්නේ ඔය විරුද්ධ පක්ෂයත් එක්ක. අපිට අවශ්‍ය නැහැ කිසිම කෙනෙක් සම්බන්ධ නම් ඒ අය ආරක්ෂා කරන්න. අපිට කිසිම අවශ්‍යතාවයක් නැහැ. අපිට ඩීල් දාන්න අවශ්‍යතාවයක් නැහැ. මේක පැහැදිලිවම කියලා තියෙනවා. X ලෙස සලකුණු කර ඇති ලියකෙවිලි रजे बुद्धि प्रकाश कल Now many devotees from across the country and around the world visit the Adam's Peak, locally known as Sri Baba, where Lord Buddha is believed to have left his footprint. As a result of waste dumped at the sacred site by visiting pilgrims, Manasadhana launched Lassana Dharana with the intention of freeing the sacred site of garbage. Marking its fourth edition, the campaign was worked off today in association with the Sri Lanka Air Force. Sri Pada also known as Adam's Peak which is celebrated as a world heritage site by the UNESCO is an internationally acclaimed biodiversity hotspot however due to waste dumped by thousands of devotees who visit the sacred site each year the sensitive eco zones in the range are faced with a serious threat taking into account the current situation manusadharana's initiative to convert the sri pada site into a garbage free zone was worked off for the fourth time with the support of the sri lanka air force the program officially began at around 7 this morning followed by religious observances more than 350 members of the air force along with the team of manusadharana engaged in the cleaning process from the sri pada courtyard Garbage collected on the slopes of the Sri Pada courtyard was safely taken to the upper courtyard. <laughs> Meanwhile, garbage accumulated along the main roads leading to the sacred site, namely the Hatton Nallathanya Road, Kuruvita Eratna Road and Ratnapura Palabaddala Road were also cleaned. This campaign was supported by the Sri Lanka Police, Public Health Inspectors and the Malipan Company. In addition living guard two joined hands in shouldering the task of disinfecting the Sri Pada courtyard and the Mahagiri Dambe the garbage bags were then handed over to be transported to relevant local bodies for disposal We will see you shortly stay with us Welcome back this is first at night Now Sri Lanka's trade deficit narrowed by a further 63 million US dollars in January to end at 667 million dollars. In terms of export earnings, the declines were recorded in merchandise export and industrial goods, while increases were recorded in the rubber products, machinery and mechanical appliances, as well as food and beverage sectors. The deficit in the trade account narrowed in January 2021 by 63 million US dollars to 666 million US dollars from 730 million US dollars recorded in January 2020. Terms of trade however recorded a 7% improvement in January 2021 year on year with high export prices and lower import prices. 
Meanwhile, earnings from merchandise exports in January 2021 were 8% lower year-on-year. January 2021 export earnings were recorded at 924 million US dollars compared to 1.005 billion US dollars in January 2020. Industrial goods export earnings showed an 11.4% decline in January 2021 compared to a year ago, mainly due to declines in textiles, garments and petroleum product exports. Declines were also recorded in gems, diamonds and jewellery and many small export segments. However, sizable increases were recorded in rubber products, machinery and mechanical appliances, food, beverages and tobacco exports among others. Export earnings from agricultural goods increased by 5.9% in January 2021 year-on-year, year, mainly due to the increase in the export of spices such as cinnamon, pepper and cloves. Meanwhile, tea export earnings increased marginally due to price increases while export volumes declined. Year-on-year year, mineral exports too increased in January 2021, mainly due to the increase in titanium and zirconium ores, slag and other precious metal exports. The export volume index, however, declined by 10.2%, while the unit value index increased by 2.5% on a year-on-year -year basis in January 2021. This indicates that the decline in export earnings was due to a lower export volume. Oil settled near $70 a barrel yesterday, supported by production cuts by major oil producers and optimism about a demand recovery in the second half of the year. Brent crude settled down 41 cents to $69.22 a barrel, while the West Texas Intermediate crude also ended down 41 cents to $65.61 a barrel. Brent and WTI crude ended week roughly flat after prices touched a 13-month high on Monday following seven straight weeks of gains. The organization of the petroleum exporting countries forecast a stronger oil demand recovery this year, weighted to the second half and has also decided along with its allies to maintain its output curbs almost unchanged. U.S. drillers are also holding back cutting the number of oil and natural gas rigs operating for the first time since November. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.